So let's recap now about what we have here. We have the channel gains, both direct and indirect, from each transmitter to each other receiver. And these values we've included here for reference. We have the noise powers at each of the receivers. And so we'll set an initial transmit power. And we'll set each of them initially to be at 2 milliwatts. Now this is a parameter that would be given to you in the algorithm to sort of start it running. But in reality, it's uh, something that your phone would just start with just to get it going in the algorithm. So the first thing that we have to do is find the initial signal to interference ratios. So then we can move on to the first iteration to compute the updated power levels and then recompute the signal to interference ratios and so on. So we'll do that now starting with the first link A. Link A has a direct gain of 0.9 and a transit power of 0.2. So we know that the signal, and again, remember that the inter signal interference ratio is signal over interference plus the noise. So the signal is 0.9 times 2 milliwatts. The first part of the indirect gain is this 0.1 here times this 2 milliwatts. which is coming from B, and then coming from C, we have 0.2 times 2 milliwatts. And then don't forget that we have to add the noise in the receiver. So if you multiply this out, you get 1.8 milliwatts on top, and on the bottom you get 0.7 milliwatts. So now notice that these are going to cancel, and so the signal to interference ratio is a unitless quantity. It just tells us how much higher the signal is than the noise relative to the interference. And so if we do this out and do this division 1.8 divided by 0.7 gives us 2.57. So now let's move on to B. So B has a direct gain of 0.8, which is lower than, again, remember the direct gain of A and C are both 0.9, but this direct gain of 0.8 times its initial transmit power of 2 milliwatts. So for here we have 0.8 times 2 milliwatts as the signal. Then the interference we have coming in from C and from A times their power levels. So we have 0.1 times 2 milliwatts plus 0.1 times 2 milliwatts. And then we want to add also the noise in the receiver, 0.2 milliwatts. So remember the noise is higher than it was for A. So in the top here then we have 1.6 milliwatts, 0.8 times 2, divided by on the bottom we get 0.6 milliwatts. And remember again these guys cancel and we do that out we get 2.67 as the signal to interference ratio. And we can do the same thing for C. We have 0.9 times 2 as the signal. Then for the first interference we have from A 0.2 times 2. Plus from B we have 0.2 times 2. Plus then from C we have Plus then the noise in C is 0.3 milliwatts. Remember that has the highest noise out of any of the receivers. And so this gives us 1.8 milliwatts divided by 1.1 milliwatt. And after we do that, we get 1.64 to be the SIR. And so just to tabulate this equation for the measure SIR, it's equal to the signal over the interference plus the noise, as we just saw. And so that's what we need to do to compute these initial SIRs. So now we move on to the first iteration and we'll do the power update given those SIR values. So we can start at A and we see that the A's receiver is going to feed back that value of 2.57 and A is going to look at it and it's going to adjust 
its transmit power of 2 milliwatts by looking at the current or the desired SIR, which is 1.8. So let's look at 2.57 versus 1.8. 2.57 is higher, which means right now the signal to interference ratio is too high. And we want to go down towards a lower SIR because we want to get everybody in the end to their desired SIRs so that nobody's asking for too much. So we can subtract 2.57 and 1.8 to get 0.77. And what that's saying is that right now the SIR is too high by 0.77. So in order to update the, the transmit power, DPC employs something that's very similar to that single step TPC algorithm that we saw before, except that that ratio quantity that we said before is not defined in terms of power levels, it's defined in terms of uh, signal to interference quantities. It's, so if we look now intuitively here, we see that we're desiring a value of 1.8 and we have a value of 2.57. So it's too high and we want the power level to go down. So best way to do that, and the most reasonable way of doing that is by saying, well, let's multiply the current transmit power by the ratio 1.8 divided by 2.57. So we take 1.8 and divide that by 2.57. We're gonna get a quantity that's less than one. And it's that specific quantity which is telling us how much higher the current SIR is than the desired SIR. And then we multiply that by the current transmit power of two milliwatts. And so this quantity, the ratio here, comes out to be 0.7. And we multiply that then by two milliwatts and we get 1.4 milliwatts as being the as being the power level for the next iteration of A. Notice it is lower than what it was before because the SIR was measured to be higher. So we're trying to compensate for that. Now we'll move on to B. So B is going to feed back the SIR of 2.67 to the transmitter. And then it's going to look at its current transmit power of 2 milliwatts and its desired SIR of 2.0 and determine how it should update. And the update formula is going to be the same, but notice now that we have the same situation where this is too high. So the measured SIR is still too high right now. So we have 2.67 minus 2.0 gives us 0.67. It tells us how much higher it is than what it should be. And so we'll do the same thing again where we take this ratio 2.0, which is where we want to be, divided by 2.67, which is where we are right now and multiply that by the current transit power of 2 and we get that ratio quantity to be 0.75 which means that we need to lower it by 25 percent what it is right now to get down to 2.0 and so 0.75 then times 2 is going to give us 1.50 milliwatts notice again that this is lower than this because this was higher than this now we'll move on to C, and C is going to feed back this 1.64 and look at it relative to the 2.2. So now we're in the exact opposite situation to what we were before. Now the SIR is too low, so the power level needs to go up. And it's too low by 2.2 minus 1.64, which is 0.56. And so we do the same equation again, where we take where we want to be divided by where we are right now, which is 2.2 divided by 1.64. But notice now that this quantity is greater than one rather than less than one. And we multiply that by the current transit power. So this transit power is going to go up and it's 1.34 times two, which gives us one point, which gives us 2.68 milliwatts. And notice now that this is higher than this because this was too low, so we're boosting that power level now. And so this is the equation, this is the actual DPC update equation right here. That the next power is equal to this thing called the ratio, which as we said is the desired SIR over the measured SIR, 
it's where we want to be over where we are right now times the current power and we do that at each iteration as we keep measuring the SIRs. So next question is why do we have to do such an update? It seems pretty complicated so why why do we have to bother with it? Well it turns out that this is looked at from a different standpoint. We're actually aligning each of the cell phones incentives here. And basically what we mean by that is that we're forcing each of them to internalize the negative externality that they impose on the network by being there in the first place. And the negative externality here is in the form of interference. So the fact that A is in this network is going to cause interference for B and for C. So by making them follow this courtesy procedure, we make them say that if their SIR level is too high right now, that they will lower their transmit power and cut back in order to internalize the negative effect that they're imposing on everyone else in the network. Now, negative externality will be a recurring theme throughout this course, and we'll see it many times in many different contexts. It's one of the main themes of this course. And the way that that negative externality, as we said, is internalized is through a process called negative feedback, which we will take a brief detour to look at. 